people always ask me for advice on how to become vegan, and I get it, because this way of living can totally transform your life. It definitely transformed mine when I went vegan way back in 2011. Now listen, things have changed and hindsight is 2020. So I can look back and see all the mistakes that I made. So I decided to put myself back in that beginner mindset and craft a plan to help you become vegan in 2024. These are the things that I would do if I were becoming vegan right now, today, and things that I think you should consider if you want to live a healthy, thriving, sustainable vegan life. Is going vegan the best thing I've ever done in life? Pretty much, next to having my daughter, going vegan is it. It totally changed my life in so many different ways. So I have a lot to thank this lifestyle for. Back when I first became vegan in 2011, we basically relied on produce for most of our nutrition. We did not have access to that many processed or packaged vegan foods. If you go to the grocery store now, you have so many different types of vegan cheese and vegan milk and vegan meat even that we didn't have back in 2011. And because of that, I feel like I had a really good foundation of healthy vegan eating because I didn't buy processed foods. Instead, the foundation of my diet immediately upon becoming vegan was whole grains, produce, fruits and vegetables, legumes, um, nuts and seeds, and I really learned how to cook those things early on. So now we've got all this packaged junk food, but I know that I do not need to eat those foods and I do not want those foods because I know that the whole foods are just better. You know what I think the most important thing to do when you first become vegan is? It is to commit to eating 80-20. 80% of the time, at least, eating whole foods like fruits and vegetables, whole grains, legumes like beans and lentils, nuts and seeds and other healthy fats, mushrooms, all that good stuff. And only 20% of the time, or even less, eating processed foods. See, when I became vegan way back in 2011, we basically had to rely on produce for the majority of our nutrition. We had tofu, produce, legumes, all the good stuff, all the healthy stuff, really. It wasn't until more recently that we started seeing so many different vegan processed and packaged foods at the grocery store. And people get easily confused thinking that by switching from an animal product to a vegan packaged or processed food that you are really doing yourself a lot of favors. And in reality, you're really not. What I'm seeing now is the veganization of the standard American diet. The standard American diet is known to be bad for your health. Americans are some of the least healthy people on the planet. We spend the most for healthcare and have some of the worst outcomes. Why is this? The majority of the reason has to do with the fact that Americans in the standard American diet is full of processed food, sugary food, and junk. So don't do that when you become vegan, at least not if you want to stay healthy or even become healthy. I think there is a place for eating vegan processed foods, but definitely in moderation for special occasions only. When you're eating out at a restaurant or you might wanna try the new vegan burger at Carl's Jr. or Burger King, but don't rely on those foods every day. And by eating 80% healthy, wholesome, colorful, beautiful, delicious, bountiful produce, legumes and such, you will feel your best and you will reduce your risk for the top killers in the United States, which are heart disease, cancer, diabetes, stroke, all those things are what are considered preventable and lifestyle diseases that eating a healthy diet can help you avoid. Transition in your own way. It doesn't have to happen overnight. You don't have to become vegan in a couple months. If you're like me, you might wanna explore things. It took me technically four years from the time I started eating healthy and becoming interested in healthy eating until I finally became vegan. I honestly had no intention of becoming vegan when I started this journey, but I learned about animal cruelty and look, I could not look back. 
Not only do I feel like I'm doing something better for the animals by not contributing directly to animal cruelty, but also I realize that eating vegan is the healthier option too, and I'm really passionate about that. But anyway, I had to transition in my own time, and you have to transition in your own time. Don't compare your journey to anybody else's. Your journey is your journey. Recognize that we're all on our own path, and that is okay. Start with why. I have found that the best way to have success in life is to start with why, to know your motivation, to know why you're doing the thing, whatever that thing may be. And in this case, going vegan. It's so important to know why you're becoming vegan. Are you doing it because you wanna lose weight for a vacation? Are you doing it for something deeper and more long-term? Whatever the case may be, be clear about that because you are gonna face some challenges along the way. The challenge might be that you don't have time to cook or you can't find the time to cook or you, you eat an animal product because you're visiting your grandma or something. But you can always come back to your why when things get challenging or you fall off the wagon. You can get back on that wagon, you can get back on track if you only commit to the why. That is what I use for anything I wanna do in life. I always start with, why do I wanna do this? And as soon as things get tough, I go back to why did I start this in the first place? And then that helps me get through the tough part and come out on the other side stronger, more prepared, wiser, and just better off. Okay, sorry, but you gotta cut the junk out. You gotta get rid of the stuff in your kitchen, in your pantry that is going to tempt you. Give it away, give it away to somebody else who likes junk food or still eats animal products, but don't leave it in your kitchen if you think it's going to tempt you. And if it's in there, it just might. Now, if you live with somebody else and they're not vegan, don't throw away their food, don't do that. But do what you need to remove temptation and to help yourself succeed. When I first became vegan, I found myself having some cookies in the pantry that are not fully vegan, and I just wanted to eat them all up because I didn't want to waste the food. But I recognized that, wait, didn't I say I don't want to contribute to animal harm? Like, that means that I can throw these cookies away or just give them to my roommate, and that is okay. It's junk food. Most of the time what we're talking about is junk food. Junk food is not even real food, y'all, so just throw it away. As with anything in life, if you have a plan, you are more likely to succeed. It's no different when you're going vegan, so you need to have a meal plan or even a meal prep guide. Luckily, I've got a ton of meal prep guides and meal plans on my blog, which I will link down below, and I also share one in my newsletter every week to help you stay on track. Having a guide or a meal plan will just help you plan out what are you gonna eat in the coming days ahead. I love meal prepping at the beginning of the week when I have some free time so that I don't have to cook from scratch every single day. That eliminates the need to eat out at a restaurant or rely on packaged processed foods, and it just makes it so much easier for me to maintain a healthy diet. Now this goes whether you're vegan or not. If you are meal prepping, you are more likely going to eat better, eat cleaner, healthier, and not spend as much money, to be honest. Food journaling, I love this because it will help you keep track of what you're putting into your body. This is especially important when you first start going vegan because a lot of people have a tendency when they start eating vegan, especially if they're doing it for health reasons, they have a tendency to food restrict, not eat enough food, and then feel weak and hungry and not great at the end of a week or even a couple months or even the day. So write down what you're eating and how much of it you're eating and how it's making you feel so you will be honest with yourself and recognize patterns. I love food journaling because it will help you get a very clear and honest picture of what you're already putting into your body. That can be a little confusing for people, so maybe in your first week of eating vegan, write down, even take a picture of everything you're eating and how much you're eating as well Keep track of how that's making you feel. I recognize that a lot of people who are coming from a standard American diet or diet culture have a tendency to want to food restrict, calorie restrict on a healthy vegan diet as well, which is totally not necessary because plants, especially wholesome plants, fruits, vegetables, those things, have fewer calories than processed food and animal products. So you do not need to restrict your calories. Instead, you can eat vegan, healthy vegan food in abundance, which you should. 
especially if you wanna feel your best. You might have heard of people going vegan and feeling hungry all the time or feeling weak or tired, and that is more than likely because they were not eating enough food. If you come to my house and see how much I eat, I eat a lot of like quantity. When I make my salad, it is big, it is beautiful, and there is a lot of it. You gotta eat a lot of food when you're eating a healthy vegan diet. That's why this way of eating is perfect for people who like to eat, like me, I love to eat. Going vegan was the best decision I could have made. Don't sweat the small stuff, you guys. As a vegan, even I've been vegan for 13, 13 years, sometimes I go to a restaurant and they accidentally give me something with dairy in it. I eat it, I recognize it right away. I feel like crap, mostly emotionally and mentally, not really physically, and oh well, like crap happens. Sometimes you can only go to vegan restaurants, but sometimes you have to go to a non-vegan restaurant and they will make a mistake and that's fine. Sometimes you'll fall off the wagon, maybe you go visit your grandma or you go on a trip and you eat some non-vegan thing and that's fine. The goal of being vegan is to eliminate harm as much as possible. So of course you are not perfect, nobody is perfect, nobody can ever be perfect and sometimes you make mistakes, sometimes you fall off, that is fine, you can just get back on it. Nobody is keeping track and keeping tabs on your mistakes as a vegan. And if they are, look, it's none of their business anyway. So you do you. Take care of yourself, don't beat yourself up when you fall off. Don't think you have to give up just because you've fallen off, made a mistake. Just get back on track, be kind to yourself. When I first became vegan, I got a little distracted y'all. So I went vegan, but I also like went raw. I did a raw thing cleanse, not, what I, not a cleanse, but I did only raw food for a month. And then I also went on like a couple juice cleanses and I also would do like colonics. None of that stuff was necessary. None of it was necessary. What I've learned from all these years of being vegan is that it's really simple. It's simple, simple. Just eat 80 to 90% whole food plant-based, simple, right? Fruits, vegetables, eliminate processed and highly processed foods. And then 10, no more than 20% of the time, you can indulge in like some processed and even sometimes highly processed foods. That's the whole thing, y'all. That's really that. Oh, and don't calorie restrict. Eat as much as you need to feel full, nourished, energized, healthy. That's how you know if you're eating a good diet, if you feel amazing and you don't have deficiencies, you are not getting sick a lot, you are energized, you sleep well, you've got great digestion. That's all you need to know. That's all you need to know. You don't need to go raw, you don't need to go on a fast, you don't need to buy special vitamins, you don't need to go alkaline. None of that stuff is necessary if you just eat a healthy plant-based diet, which how many times do I have to say what a healthy plant-based diet is? If you've been watching my videos, I think you already know. So stick with that and you will thrive. And if I were going vegan today, I would make sure to have a beautiful, bountiful salad like this every day. Eating the rainbow, you know, all the different pretty colors of the vegetables, that can help you guarantee that you are getting all the nutrients that you need. But just be sure to not restrict your calories and your portions when it comes to eating balanced, healthy vegan food, especially not salads. That big old bowl that I made, I can eat all of that within two sittings. I know how difficult it is to start anything new, especially a new way of eating. So I've put together a PDF guide that you can download for free. The link is down below. I'm gonna share links to lots and lots of meal plans as well as recipes and other resources that I recommend for starting your journey on the best foot possible. So check that out down below. If you want more delicious vegan recipes, please be sure to subscribe to my channel. And of course, as always, Check out my blog, sweetpotatosoul.com for hundreds of delicious recipes and meal plans. I'll see you guys next week. Bye.